is that for energy, Honorable Ureku Edu, my brother and friend from, from, from another mother, my brother from another mother. Ladies and gentlemen, may I invite the Honorable Minister of Information himself to give us today's briefing. The government of Ghana and the United States government have come to a conclusion on the resolution of residual matters of the Compact II agreement. As has been widely reported, the government of Ghana has elected to terminate the concession agreement with PDS Limited, which was a properly selected concessionaire for the private sector participation in the ECG turnaround program. In return, the US side has de-obligated to make available the outstanding 190 million US dollars in the entire 498 million compact. The Ghanaian and American sites regret that we could not find a mutually agreeable path to have concluded the utilization of the full 498 million dollars. On the Ghana side, we are not able to compromise because we are advised, and we believe same to be true, that the concessionaire failed as initially suspected, to meet a material and fundamental term of the concession agreement, which was to deliver and maintain valid payment securities for the transfer of assets. On the American side, though the insurers have indicated that they do not intend to stand by the purported guarantees, the view is that a termination is unwarranted and a restructuring will be more tolerable. As we have mentioned, the two sides were not able to agree on a common path to resolve this point. The government of Ghana, consequently, from 9.30 a.m. today, is commencing the process to terminate. The necessary documentations are being filed with PDS and the Energy Commission. It is expected that residual matters between ECG and PDS will be resolved with dispatch. ECG has remained in possession of assets while PDS has been assisting it with some limited services in the period during which the concession was suspended prior to this termination. The government of Ghana and the US government will continue to work together on other development cooperation projects. This for the avoidance of doubt, has not been a crisis of confidence. It has been a difference in opinion, which we have mutually agreed to respect. Now, government hereby also addresses a number of issues that have been raised during this intervening period. First, could this failure to deliver and maintain valid securities have been discovered earlier? The view of the government is that, to the extent that the actual documentation to bring the concession uh, agreement to a close will end in September, including the conditions subsequent, anything that was transpiring up to that September timeline, which was in breach of the terms, would have still been grounds for us to be in the same place. Second, has the government been negligent in this transaction? Never. The government of Ghana has at all times worked with MCC in structuring this transaction in the best interest of Ghanaians. No effort to get Ghana a good deal has been spared. Third, is it true that the transaction was botched by some machinations of government? Government has not been up to any machinations. The intent has been to ensure efficiency in the ECG turnaround program and the fulfillment of the broader compact all along. Was there something wrong with switching from 8020 to 4951? Absolutely not. The government holds the view that in transactions of this nature, Ghana and Ghanaians should be given an opportunity to get a deep end of the stick as much as is possible. Was there something wrong with switching from bank guarantees as opposed to insurance guarantees? Our views are the two have the same effect. There was nothing wrong with this change. It was the only feasible path at that stage since the tariff methodology had not been made available as at that time. Is government still interested in private sector participation? Yes, government is interested in private sector participation. 
in the coming days, the minister responsible for finance will be outlining how we intend to achieve private sector participation in the ECG turnaround program still, even in the absence of this um, particular option. Should government have acquiesced to the MCC pressure to save the $190 million U.S. grant? We do not believe so. The view of government is that to the extent that we advised and we believe same to be true, that the concessionaire had failed in delivering and maintaining valid securities. It was not possible to go along that route. The government of Ghana in 2014, during the Mahama administration, signed up to the compact agreement and opted for private sector participation in the ECG turnaround. The Akufuado administration lifted Ghanaian participation from 20% to 51% to ensure that while Ghana benefits from both the technical and financial muscle of the elites, Ghanaians have the opportunity to participate more significantly in the non-technical parts of the concession. The government believes that any transaction of this nature must be structured to give Ghana and Ghanaians a significant play. Additionally, the government ensures or ensured that no jobs were lost in the transfer process and no jobs will be lost even in this termination process as well. The decision that the government has had to take, as difficult as it is, despite the significant international pressure, is necessary in our view to protect and preserve the assets of ECG and Ghanaians. President Akufuado took a solemn oath before God and the Ghanaian people that he will be faithful and true to the Republic of Ghana, that he will dedicate himself to the service and well-being of the people of the Republic of Ghana, and he has done exactly that despite the pressure. The 308 million US dollars already secured will be utilized to improve the parts of the program, such as the primary substations, etc. Measures have been put in place to ensure a smooth transition fully to ECG, and shortly I would invite the Deputy Energy Minister, the Honorable Reku Edu, to outline some of those measures. The government has been committed to ensuring and will continue to ensure that even in this period, or the period of this suspension, electricity supply has been and will continue to be stable. Dumso is a thing of the past. We also do not expect interruptions in power supply as a result of this decision. Now, before I invite the Honorable Deputy Minister, I want to quickly deal with some other political matters that have come up during this period. During the intervening period, government also noticed several actors, political and civil society, who weighed in on the matter with some views. And we note sections of the Ghanaian community that have preferred well-meant suggestions. Our view is that when your nation is at the crossroads, you back it, you wish it well, and you support it. We also note in particular the opposition NDC that has only sought to make political capital out of this with the hopes that it will inure to their parochial benefit. They have consistently made efforts to pitch Ghana against foreign investors. And this is not the first time. In the FT transaction, they sought to report the sovereign state to the U.S. government with hopes that the U.S. government will investigate and maybe sanction the Ghanaian authorities. They failed. In the Sino-Hydro transaction, they sought to get the IMF to scuttle the transaction. They failed. In this particular transaction, you will recall that they were quick to seek to get the U.S. government to take over the inquiry and literally push Ghana on where to go. Initially, they claimed that this was because conditions precedent had been changed to conditions subsequent. And that is why due diligence wasn't properly done. This has been proven over time to be mere propaganda and a palpable untruth, and it will not wash. The NDC distortions that the Akufuado government conspired to bend the rules for PDS have also clearly been exposed by the record of events. For the avoidance of doubt, Government reiterates that neither the government nor the president has had any interest in PDS. PDS is a consortium that was created by the company known as Miralco, which was the successful bidder in the selection process. Government or its assigns did not form PDS. Miralco was selected through an international competitive process supervised by agencies including the MCC, which process was initiated in 2016. And we have the view that this attempt to distort facts will not wash. 
while the NDC seeks to always tag this transaction as corrupt, they have never been able to adduce one piece of cogent evidence to back this claim. The evidence, rather, is that the Akufuado administration is the one which, through due diligence, discovered the suspected breach and has proceeded to act to preserve national assets. And again, any propaganda to the contrary will not wash. We thank Ghanaians for the confidence we post in the key government actors who are handling this transaction. They will continue to act with conviction in the best interest of Ghanaians towards securing PSP in ECG or in the ECG turnaround and its attendant benefits. I want to invite the Deputy Minister for Energy to outline the um, intermediary steps as ECG uh, is expected to fully take back control. As the Minister um, alluded to, ECG is writing to uh, the Energy Commission informing it of the termination of the agreement um, between itself, ECG, and uh, PDS as the concession. And this will trigger the EC, because if there is no concession agreement, there cannot be a license for uh, the PDS to operate. As you know, the sales and um, retail of energy license has already been suspended, and PDS, up until 9.30 this morning, was still in possession of the distribution um, of energy, uh, distribution license. That one will today be terminated um, by uh, the Energy Commission as the law demands. ECG, when all these things have been effected, will assume full control of the assets which hitherto has been in possession of uh, PDS. One may ask what happens to the workers of ECG, um, PDS. And the assertion is that once we, there was no transfer, if the demand guarantee was not in place as of March, uh, 1st of March, then it necessarily means that there was no transfer of workers. So the workers still remain the workers of ECG, and an ECG will be meeting the unions and the general uh, workers' body today to explain to them exactly what has um, happened. I think that is um, what I can say as far as the transfer and the, um, the like that's going to happen this morning.